Apogee consists of the following two primary components. Apogee services, which are the APIs that you use to create, manage, and deploy your API proxies, also known as the Apogee APIs. Next is the Apogee Runtime, which is a set of containerized services in a Kubernetes cluster that Google maintains. All your API traffic passes through it. Additionally, Apigee uses other Google Cloud services, such as identity management, logging, analytics, metrics, and project management functions. And then there are backend services used by your apps to provide runtime access to data. To get started with setting up your environment with Apigee, you can choose to create an evaluation or a paid environment. In this video, I will share the differences between the two and how to start off with the evaluation version, which is also known as a test or eval org. Before diving into Apigee, you need to have a Google Cloud billing account created or have management access to that Google Cloud project. With that in place, you can create an evaluation org. And when you are ready, you can purchase a paid version that requires a contract with Google. Now, the key differences are the following. An evaluation org is time limited and lacks the scalability and flexibility of production orgs. Although an eval org is free of cost, you do need to set up a billing account in your Google Cloud project, but Google covers your cost and the org is deleted after 60 days. And finally, when using the UI to provision your eval org, you will have fewer options than if you did so via the command line. For this video, we will walk through how to create an evaluation org. It is very similar to that of creating a paid org. And in this video's description, I have linked several helpful resources. So let's dive in. Creating an Apigee evaluation org is straightforward and can be done using the UI wizard or command line. There's also a GitHub script for the command line simplifying that approach. Let's use the wizard since this is the simplest and quickest, which is in the docs. First, I enter the name of my project or I can choose to create a new one. Note that the wizard detects that it is not a project with paid entitlements and can only be used for evaluation. Next, click the edit icon next to APIs and choose enable APIs. This takes a couple of minutes to complete. A check will display next to the enable API step and the networking step will be available. Click edit next to networking. The setup networking pane is then displayed. Select a network from the authorized network dropdown list. For most eval orgs, you select the network that Google Cloud created when you created your Google Cloud project, called default. However, if you have a custom network and peering range you want to use, select it from the list. For this example, I will choose default, connect. Next, I will select the option automatically allocate IP range, but if you already have one or wish to create one yourself, you can select the desired option from the dropdown. The IP range is for peering between your Google Cloud project and Apigee, and the process also takes a couple of minutes to complete. Now that networking is configured, we can provision the org. Select the analytics and runtime regions closest to you. Click provision. This can take anywhere from 20 to 30 minutes. Once the organization has been provisioned, you will get an email notification. Your Apigee evaluation is ready to use. Let's go back to the wizard and move on to configuring access routing. This allows you to configure access to your Apigee endpoint, either internally or externally. Internal limits access to the Apigee endpoint to VMs in your GCP project. This is the internal load balancer. External allows access to your APIs over the public internet through the configuration of an HTTP global load balancer with a public static IP address. Creating an external load balancer can incur fees for up to $20 to $25 in your project, which can be covered by the free project credits I linked again in the description. For this example, I will choose the external option, which is called Enable Internet Access. You now have the option to configure the host name. If you have access to a DNS registry and have an existing domain, you can enter your own host name and then create a new DNS record for your host name pointing to the static IP address. If you do not have a host name, you can use a wildcard DNS service such as nip.io, which is suggested. 
It will give you a host name using the external IP address of the global load balancer with the domain suffix nip.io. With this approach, Google automatically provisions and manages the SSL certificates for the global load balancer. This is the easiest and quickest path to getting your org operational. And here's what that would look like when finished. Alternatively, you can specify your own hostname from a domain you own. I have entered mine, which becomes the hostname for my APIs. This also shows us the runtime location and the internal load balancer for the Apigee endpoint. It's now asking for a subnet, and I can choose an option in the dropdown, which in this case is called default, and is in the same region as the runtime. I then have the option to use my own SSL certificates and key, or I can skip this by leaving it blank and have Google create and manage them automatically. This is the easiest. Then select Set Access. Note this step can take about 10 minutes to complete. In this step, you can see the progress of each component being created. Upon completion, choose Continue. Here we can see that Apigee has provided the IP address of the global load balancer, which I now use to create an entry in my DNS configuration. So let's go ahead and do that. In this example, our domain is hosted on Google Domains. Here I create a new custom record using the prefix of type A and add the IP address, then click Save. This will take about 10 minutes to propagate on Google Domains, but may vary depending on your domain host. Once that happens, I can choose Launch to see the Hello Guest response from the Hello World proxy that Apigee created for us. Great, now we can go to the Apigee console and begin creating our own proxies, which we have a video for you to reference as a next step. And there you have it, a quick walkthrough on how to create your first evaluation org in Apigee using the wizard interface. And friends, if you found this episode helpful, you can click like or subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Cheers.